good day and welcome to this special edition here on GIS. Today, this program is specific to that of the recognition of World Kidney Day, which will be observed on Thursday, March 9th, 2023. And today we will be speaking with Health Promotion Officer, Ms. Kalisha Daniel, about the kidneys. It's the importance of it in our bodies, how we can better care for them, and some of the chronic illnesses that affect it. What we are doing right, what we are doing wrong, what we may improve on, so that at the end of the day, we can protect this very important organ in our bodies. So when we come back, we will be speaking with Ms. Daniel um, all about the kidneys and the theme and so for this year's observance and the importance of this day recognized on the international level. We'll be back shortly. So you think it's all about sport? Running can save your life. Say you're at the beach, having a good time, and you feel a strong shaking. Run. See the water withdrawn unusual distance from the shore. Run. Hear a strange roar. Run. If you experience any of these warning signs, run to higher ground. There may not be enough time for an official tsunami warning. Be tsunami smart. Know the natural warning signs. Are you ready? Visit WeReady.org. Brought to you by Sadima and the European Union. Run. Welcome back. I'm Oslin Crosby and it's always a pleasure to be here with you. Miss Daniel, thank you so much for being here. It is an important observance and you are no stranger to this program. So welcome again. Thank you, Miss Crosby. Always a pleasure and whenever we speak in health, we know that we will come to you always there to give us the information. And this one, as we said, is a special edition. World Kidney Day, observe March 9th. Um, first, let's start off with the importance of our kidneys. Um, what is that very important organ in our body and, and its true function in, in ensuring that our bodies remain healthy? Definitely. So the kidneys, basically, they are the two bean-shaped organs that are located deep in the back and they perform a number of important functions. Now, the most important function of the kidney is that of removing waste, toxins, and excess fluid from the blood. Now, other important functions of the, of the kidneys include controlling or regulating blood pressure. They assist in the formation of red blood cells, as well as they assist in the you know, the balance, right? So they help balance water and certain minerals like sodium and potassium in the blood. So these are basically the, the function of our kidneys. Okay. With an organ with such an important function, as every other organ in our bodies, it can go defunct. Um, but for this to happen, then since we are the, the ones that put things in there, that can bring it to that um, that 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 place. It therefore means that we have a huge responsibility in ensuring that we protect it. That's right. um, first, let's speak about some of our actions that may be responsible for kidneys getting to that state, and what it is that we need to do better so that we can better protect that very important organ. That's a very important question because there are a number of of, of activities or there are a number of habits that we're engaging, and unbeknownst to us, they actually harm or they impact our kidneys negatively. For example, when we eat too much, let's say salt, when we consume too much salt, too much sugar, these increase our risk for developing chronic kidney, well, they increase our risk for developing diabetes and hypertension. And diabetes and hypertension are the two leading cause of chronic kidney disease in the world. Right now, I just want to go back a little to just give us some some statistics. Now, there was a study that was done over a period of time, specifically the Global Burden of Disease Study, that's the 2019 version, which showed that chronic kidney disease moved from the fifth to the fourth leading cause of death in Grenada during the period 2009 and 2019. So over that that 10 year period there was a tremendous increase in the in the amount of deaths from chronic kidney disease and that represented just about 32 percent increase in deaths from ckd or chronic kidney disease now not only that but during the same period there were notable increases in deaths from diabetes 
from ischemic heart disease, from hypertensive heart disease, and even stroke, which suggests that the prevalence and even the incidence of both diabetes and hypertension, they are on the rise. And like I just said, they are the leading cause of chronic kidney disease. Now, what, what do we do that affect our kidneys badly? First of all, if, if we have diabetes, right, and we fail to keep our blood sugar levels under control, that can eventually harm our kidneys or lead to kidney failure. Likewise, hypertension. Right, so it's very important that if a person has if diabetes or hypertension, that they do what, what's necessary. For example, in the case of diabetes, ensure that you take your medication as prescribed. Ensure that you continue to exercise for at least, like if you're an adult, at least 150 minutes a week. We can break that down to just 30 minutes in a day so that you can get that blood sugar level under control. Not only that, it's also important to avoid smoking, right? Smoking can slow the movement of blood or the flow of blood to the kidneys, which can actually harm the kidneys as a result of insufficient blood. Now, what else can, do we do as a people, or as individuals that affect our kidneys? Now, we experience pain from time to time. Sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's otherwise right and there is a certain class of medications specifically non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs right these these this refers to a class of painkillers for, for example aspirin ibuprofen paracetamol if used over a long period of time these drugs can actually harm kin our kidneys okay. whether our kidneys are healthy or a bit you know mm -hmm borderline to, to, to that of becoming defunct. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. And it is advised that people with chronic kidney disease should not be using this class of drugs of because it can actually cause their kidney function to de deteriorate to even more quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, with, with, with that said, um, because I know that's some things that people will not know. Um, because sometimes, especially as you said it, we're in pain and the, 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 the ultimate goal is for the pain to stop. That's right. Um, the first painkiller you get your hands on, you go in there. In addition to that, um, the kidneys, there are signs, normally signs that you give us as every other body part. I often refer to a body or, or put it to that of a vehicle. Yes. A vehicle never just shuts down. Um, before you would start getting some signs. Um, something is not right. You see something on your dashboard. For us, our dashboard is us. Yes, you might start getting a headache. Something is not right. You're not feeling okay, but you just decide I'm not going to pursue it. You know, everything's all right, man. As we always say, a little gas. Yeah. And it's never that. And then when it gets to the state, no one is advanced is when we start getting some of the bigger symptoms, and then it is too late. How do we then? What are some of the signs that we can look for as you do to kidney disease? Right, that's, that's also a very important question because the truth is, I'm glad you mentioned what you just said, because the truth is a person can actually lose up to 90% of the kidney function before actually experiencing any symptoms, right? So that is very important to note. Up to 90% of kidney function can be lost before experiencing any symptoms. But when a person does actually begin to experience symptoms, they may find that the skin becomes a bit dry and itchy, okay. right? They may find changes in, in, in urination. For example, they may experience blood in the urine or they may notice that the urine is a bit filled with bubbles or it's a bit foamy. Okay. Right. Another another common symptom of chronic kidney disease is that of swelling, swelling in the feet, in the hands, in the face. Some persons may experience shortness of breath as a result of the buildup of fluid in the lungs, and some people may be may have difficulty thinking, sleeping, or even concentrating. Some may lose their appetite. Right? There are a range of symptoms that are associated with chronic kidney disease, but the truth is in order to really know what's really causing those symptoms is to get tested to see what exactly is the source. Okay, okay. 
Okay. And normally, if you do observe, it's best that you check a medical doctor and let them then send you on to, 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 to get the um, That's the right. necessary test so that you can determine what's happening. That's right. As opposed to making assumptions and thinking, well, it's this, and then it may very well be too late by the time you actually get screened for what's causing that problem. That is true. That is true. Um, we often hear that the kidney is the sieve of the body. So it's the filter is yes. what takes out the good stuff. So leave them in there and then the, 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 so the good stuff gets to go on and fortify the body or the bad stuff gets to stay there and then it sends it up. That's right. If that strain, of course, we know that it goes defunct, then at the end of the day, the entire body will, will be crippled. That is when we get to the point where people have to do um, what we call it again, dialysis. dialysis yes. And dialysis is very, very expensive. Having to clean the blood at least three times a week so that you can function as best you can. It's a very expensive venture. So I think it's always best that we prevent rather than to have to, yes. to, to, to um, in some way or another, treat because it's difficult to do so. Yes. I want to also mention that another important uh, treatment for chronic kidney disease is that of a kidney transplant. Trans and even that too has its challenges. Yeah. For one, there is often a lack of donors, mm -hmm. right? And in cases where you actually have a donor, you get the, the, the organ, then there is the high probability or possibility that that person could actually, the body could reject that new organ. Mm -hmm. And if the transplant was successful, then that person would have to stay on medication for the rest of the life, you know? So there are so many challenges right that are associated with with kidney treatment and i firmly believe that before we even get to that point it is it is very important for us to work do our very best to prevent our kidneys from failing in the first place yes and and, and i think that is what that is what the awareness on world international world, world kidney day is all about yes. in that of making you aware of what the illnesses are um, how we can go defunct and to avoid it so yes. that you don't get to the stage where you have to treat because treatment is it is it is very very intense it is very expensive and at the end of the day it it may just lengthen your chances for a bit longer but at the end of the day you would have a very very uncomfortable life with the defunct kidney yes we are going to take a break now. When we come back, we would speak to the theme for this year's observance and also some of the tips that we want to remind you of that you should take into consideration foods that you should eat, some of the things that you should avoid, what you should be doing to ensure that your kidney remains a very healthy organ because with a healthy kidney, then we also have a healthier body. We'll be back shortly. You ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Miss Lee. Yes, it's me, Earthquake. I come in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced. And when it come, it shake all sense and sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside, and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shaking starts, you know it's Earthquake. Make a quick move to a safe place. Don't run to the doorway or any exit. Stairs might rock up or full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and poof, power gone, and you're stuck in that box without ear. Take cover under a strong table or a bed or crouch against an inside wall or in a corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH, drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls and doors in an earthquake, bad news. Take for yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't want to run outside and ask, you feel it, you feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH, drop, cover, hold on. Welcome back. Just in case you are just joining us, I am speaking today with Health Promotion Officer, Ms. Kalisha Daniel, about the importance of World Kidney Day, observed on March 9th each year. This year, we are speaking about the function of the kidney. What is it? What are the things that we are doing that can help make our, um, our kidneys defunct? What can make it sick? Yeah. And when that happens, what we have to go through, that long, tedious, expensive process to ensure that we stay alive. So now we're about to get into that part of the discussion where we speak to what it is that we should do now. What are the things that we should eat to ensure that the kidney remains a very healthy organ in our bodies? Right. So in terms of diets, it's, it's always important to consume foods in their whole state or whole foods. 
right? A lot of fruits, vegetables, mm -hmm. and it's also important that we limit certain foods like the saturated fats, the sugars, the salt, because this can can increase our chances for developing, like I said before, chronic conditions like diabetes and hypertension, which can actually move on to kidney problems, mm -hmm. right? Now, on the whole, topic of, of, of diet, it's also important that we do not neglect water, yeah. right? Because I know there are a lot of people who do not, who think that they're actually consuming, or who think that they consume enough water on a daily basis, when in reality that's not the case. Now there are a number of factors that determine how much water a person should consume, one of which is that of physical activity. Right? So if a person is more physically active, he or she would obviously sweat more. And the more they lose, the more fluid they lose, right. then the need, their need to replace that fluid increases. Yeah. Right? Not only that, but also age is a very important factor. Children would need less water than adults. Than adults. Then how much is the question, water should we be drinking on a daily basis? Well, for children, the average, the recommended daily amounts is just about one liter, right? Children, let's say from four years of age to maybe 13, one liter. 14 to about 18, it could go after one to one and a half liter. And for adults, like you and, my, you and I, it's important that we try to consume just about 1.5 to two liters of water every day. Because the truth is we lose water when we sweat, when we urinate, and even when we breathe, mm -hmm. right? And in order to keep our bodies working at an optimal level, we need to constantly replace the fluids that we lose. Okay, okay, okay. So that's how we can keep it healthy. Yes. yes? The fatty foods, we spoke earlier about the diabetes and the hypertension, yes. and we know what can precipitate, what, what, what makes these, um, these conditions affect us even 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 faster sugars and salt That's right. so we minimize our intake of those yes yes correct now i also want to add that is it's important to get enough physical activity on a not so much a daily but regularly right on a regular basis because physical activity they help control our blood pressure levels our blood sugar levels and they also help us to maintain an ideal body weight mm -hmm. right obesity is another risk factor for chronic ki kidney disease mm -hmm. so we want to ensure that we get regular physical activity now in addition to that we do not want people to take acute kidney problems for granted and when i say acute i am referring to conditions like there is a glomerulonephritis, it's a big one, right? But it's where the filtering units of the kidneys become inflamed and damaged, right? Then there are other conditions like urinary tract infections, which are basically bacterial infections of the kidneys. Some people may experience kidney stones, right? And these, these conditions could actually cause, eventually cause chronic kidney disease, which by definition is a decreased level of kidney function for at least three months. Okay. Chronic kidney disease, I must also add, has five stages, right? Stages one and two are characterized by mild kidney damage. Stage three, mild to moderate. Stage four, moderate to severe. And stage five is, uh, is otherwise known as end-stage renal failure. Mm -hmm. This is where the kidneys have basically failed mm -hmm. or they are almost at the end. Almost at the end. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, understanding the function of the kidneys, I think, helps us to understand its importance. That's right. Um, if we are to keep it alive, then we have a huge responsibility in making sure that we do what we need to do, drink water, exercise, eat well, um, not too much sugar, not too much salt, too much of anything is not good. But at the end of the day, we do what we need to do to make sure it's safe. That's right. And I, I do not want us to close without mentioning the importance of screening for chronic kidney disease. Because mm -hmm. like I said before, chronic kidney disease is a silent killer. Yeah. It can creep up on us. Right? A person may not experience symptoms until their kidneys are about to fail. Now, in order to prevent that from happening, it's important, especially if you have diabetes, 
hypertension, if, if you have a history or if there is a history of, of kidney disease in your family, okay. if you are obese or excessively overweight, or even if you have heart problems, these are the major risk factors for chronic kidney disease. It's important to follow your doctor's recommendation for screening so that you can catch any problem as early as possible. And as it is often said, early detection, it saves lives. Yes. Yes. We cannot conclude this conversation without speaking about the theme of this year's observance Correct. and its importance to this awareness yes. um, and program. Right. So the theme for this mm -hmm. year, preparing for the unexpected, supporting the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Preparing for the unexpected, supporting the vulnerable. And in the, right here in the Caribbean, we know that we are prone to a wide range of disasters. Right? And so when disasters happen, then there is a certain category of, of individual who are considered to be most vulnerable. Now among these people are people with chronic kidney disease, right? They are usually put at a special disadvantage because of the level of care and the level of treatment that they need in order to stay alive, yeah. right? Now it's very important, it's very important for everybody to prepare for that disasters of any sort because they can happen without a more, more than a moment's notice, mm -hmm. right? Now, we are often encouraged to ensure that we that we make a plan, a disaster emergency plan, mm -hmm. also build a kit, as well as be informed. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's even more important, in my opinion, for people with chronic condition, and in this case, kidney disease, to ensure that there is a plan in place, right? Now, I want people with chronic kidney conditions should think about the possible disasters that can happen wherever they live, mm -hmm. right? So that in the event that it happens, they would have an idea of how to navigate, how to respond mm -hmm. appropriately to the, to, the, to the event. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also important to have an emergency supply kit, an emergency supply kit. And in that kit, you would want to include stuff like important medical records or even insurance information. You want to ensure that you have a list of all your medication as well as a two-week supply of each one in the event that say uh, pharmacies are closed or you can't get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's always important to have backup in the, in, in, as the need arises. Now in terms, of, in terms of information, then we also want to encourage you to ensure that you have your doctor's information or even your dialysis center. Mm -hmm. You make sure that you have their information and a contact, the name and a contact nation, a contact number for your, your, your center or your unit, right? Now, there are some people who are on peritoneal dialysis, right? And they normally perform the dialysis at home. In such a case, you want to ensure that you have your, a two-week supply of peritoneal dialysis supplies as well, as well as since their chances or they have a great risk, they are at great risk of coming down with peritonitis, which is an infection of the peritoneum, the cavity where they, you know, that filter the blood, then you want to ensure that you have at least a five-day supply of, of, of you know, anti, antibacterial medication mm -hmm. in the event that you develop an infection during an emergency an or a disaster situation. Okay, all right, wonderful, wonderful. The information, it's spot on, it speaks to the theme and it reminds us of the need to always be prepared. Yes. Um, hazards can affect us. Yes. This one is a health related one because if you do suffer with kidney disease, then it means therefore that you will have to prepare that's right. That if there are the external hazards, the hazards that are within your, con that are out of your control, that you can respond, respond appropriately to the needs of your body at the time. That's right. So, as we observed International well, World Kidney Day, we want to remind people that it is an observance in that of making you more aware of what can happen to you, but more so how to prevent it from happening by taking care of ourselves. Yeah. As we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity to share some parting words with us. Thank you. When we consider 
the vital functions of the kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. When we think about the range of problems that are associated with our kidneys, and even the challenges and, and the cost of kidney treatment, mm -hmm. I want to ask this question, can we really and truly afford for our kidneys to fail? So I want to urge the general public today to take good care of your kidneys, whether your kidneys are healthy or whether they have some form of defect. All is not lost. You can still take good care of your kidneys. Take good care of your kidneys, whether in, in, in times of emergencies or in times of stability or peace, right? It's very important that whatever we do, that we seek every day to take good care of our kidneys. Thank you so much, Ms. Daniel. It was a pleasure, as always, speaking with you. Um, on the event of World Kidney Day, observed each year, March 9th, and it is an awareness campaign aimed at ensuring that we take care of this very important organ. To treat it, it's very expensive, it's uncomfortable, it can make your life so much harder. But if we do take the proactive steps, so that we can protect our kidneys, eat well, exercise, drink lots of water, then it therefore means, and also screening. So if you know that it runs in your family, you're not sure, you're picking up some basic symptoms of it, take the necessary step, go get screened. It's best to attack it initially. When it's early, as your chances now of full recovery, it's much higher than when we get to the end stage of renal failure, and we know what can happen there, yes? Let's take care of ourselves today. World Kidney Day. Take care of the kidneys, and at the end of the day, you take care of your body. I am Arceline Crosby saying thank you so much for joining us here um, on this very special edition on the observance of World Kidney Day. We'll see you again next time.